About 13 days ago, the Dungeons & Dragons YouTube channel put out a little, like, leak of the Paladin class. And while I haven't watched the video all the way through, I've seen little tidbits. I've been hearing a lot of complaints on what they're doing with it. So let's go ahead and break it down a little bit. Let's jump into this. One of the things you'll notice as a Paladin player immediately when you see the new player's handbook is that your spellcasting has moved from level two to level one. And so you will, you will begin being able to cast spells right away. And this also has a carry-on effect for multi-classing yeah. that if you multi-class now, you will get more slots out of the paladin part of your multi-class mix than you did before. And when we talk about the ranger, we'll see that a similar thing happened there. We did this because we wanted paladin players to start learning how to use their spells right away because spells are a key part of the paladin's kit and having it at second level before meant you were waiting mm -hmm. to learn how to use one of the most important parts of your class so now there's no wait all right so they say that the spells are one of the more more important parts of the paladin class um <laughs> <laughs> I've been DMing and playing for a little bit over 12 years now. Um, I very rarely see paladins use their spell slots for spells. Um, their biggest shtick is I'm going to run in and I'm going to hit them. And when I connect, I'm going to Divine Smite. I'm going to dish out as much damage as I can just as quickly as possible to end the fight. I'm not going to heal my allies or use these damaging spells because divine smite does more damage and it's a guaranteed hit because i can choose to use it when i make contact with my target that's not to say that paladin spells aren't used uh, they're just not as important as jeremy here is saying or at least in my personal experience i haven't seen them play as big a role uh, big a role here as Jeremy's claiming they do. But maybe we'll change that here, let's see. You start right away at first level learning some spells, uh, which you'll, you'll then need to know all about when you get to level two and you start doing Divine Smite. Yeah. <laughs> uh, at level one, you don't just... Okay, so you get spells at level one now. Cool, fine, whatever. But you're still only Divine Smiting at level two. Now, in my last video, there was some. There's a an argument in the comments that a lot of DMs have their players start at third level, so anything that happens before third level is kind of irrelevant. And yeah, that's true. I still think that starting at level one with your players is fun. It gives them a better chance to build up their backstory up to how they got to as strong as they are at level three, which albeit isn't very strong, but that's not the point. Um, they are kind of forcing spells to be a, a bigger role uh, since. They're usable at level one, but Divine Smite's not usable until level two. But only if you start your campaign at level one. And unfortunately, that's kind of rare. Um, it's more rare than it should be, I, I should say. Um, but that's an interesting tactic to take, I suppose. Let's get spellcasting now, though. You still get Lay on Hands, that iconic ability that Paladins have okay, to heal good. themselves and others. And you also get weapon mastery. And so that means that paladins too are going to get to play with all of the fun that weapon mastery brings to any of our classes focused on weapon use. <laughs> so far, I mean, I'm only a minute and 40 seconds into this video. And so far I feel like they went, hey, let's take that really broken class uh, paladin uh you know the one that that has divine smite and let's make it more broken let's make it more overpowered because weapon mastery on top of divine smite I, it's uh, it's unnecessary it's a cool gimmick but it's unnecessary and it's going to make the lives of the dungeon masters a lot harder because now we have to try and balance around the um overpoweredness that is weapon mastery stacked with divine smite 
I hope that there is some form of balancing somewhere in this video. Um, I know of at least one that we'll talk about when we get to it in this video, but I just, we'll see. Now, when you get to then level two, there's more new stuff waiting for you. And at first, you might look at the class feature table for the Paladin and see, oh, fighting style, I had that before. But there's actually a lot of change hiding in there, good updates for the Paladin, because now, when you choose your fighting style as a Paladin, you are no longer restricted to a curated list like the Paladin was in 2014. You now have access to the full fighting style list that fighters also have access okay, to. Okay, interesting. And you also have the option to forego choosing any of those and instead learning some cleric cantrips. Oh, okay. So if you decide that uh, you'd rather be more of a spell hurling uh, paladin rather than leaning harder into your weapon use, you now have that option in the fighting style feature at level two. Okay. This is a part of... Uh, Hey, at level two, you get to decide if you're going to be the spellcaster, which we've already established isn't the real thing, even though it's a thing. Uh, or, more broken melee combat. Hmm. I, I think we're going to go more melee combat, because it's already broken, and we're just breaking it further. We're making it more and more overpowered. Fighting styles? Yes, please. All of the fighting styles? Oh, oh. Yes, please. I mean... I just, I don't think there's any way to properly balance this at this point. Um, I think it's great that they're giving people options. Um, and yeah, they, they get access to cleric cantrips, which isn't huge, but it's, I feel like if they had access to any cantrips, then there might be more reason to go into the spellcasting side instead of the just go super hard into melee fighting and divine smite everything every chance you get. But it's not looking good, boys and girls. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are entering a phase of we're going to have a lot of paladin players, I feel. But we'll see a theme of us providing more customization options uh, where it made sense in each of the classes. You also now get a feature called Paladin's Smite. This was called Divine Smite in 2014. It's now called Paladin's Smite because it actually now gives you two things. In 2014, this feature allowed you to use the class's iconic Divine Smite ability where you burn a spell slot and deal a bucket load of extra damage to a target you just hit. Divine Smite still does that. Divine Smite, though, has now been packaged as a spell. And then the Paladin Smite feature, in addition to giving you that spell and allowing you to always have it prepared, also now lets you cast Divine Smite once per day without burning a spell slot. So what that means is Paladins now every day get a freebie Divine Smite. And so that's going to relieve a little bit some of the pressure on their spell slots. We did this so that Paladins could certainly just use all their spell slots to cast Divine Smite but we also wanted to make it just a smidge easier for Paladins to cast some of their other spells. Hey Paladins, you didn't have enough Divine Smites. Here's a free Divine Smite once a day. So they're going hard on overpowering the melee combat of a Paladin. Pretending like anybody's going to pick any spells or the, you know, uh, forego a fighting style in lieu of getting some cleric cantrips. They're going to pick the fighting style. They're, they've got Weapon Mastery. They've got Divine Smite. It's a spell now. Um, but they... I mean, it was basically a spell before. They just didn't classify it as a spell. It, it was... It took spell slots before. 
now it's an actual spell. Cool. Yippee. It still functions the same way, relatively. I know they made a little, couple of changes that's got to be coming up real soon here. But now you've got Paladin Smite, so you get a free Divine Smite once per long rest. Um, I just... Hmm. If they wanted the Paladin to be a melee character, then they should have just said that and not try and pretend like they're going to try and get people to play it as a spellcasting class because, oh, look, we've got some new spellcasting things thrown into it. Ooh, people are going to pick that for sure. I got news for you. People at Dungeons & Dragons Design, um, nobody's going to pick the spellcasting. They're just, they're just not. You are making the melee portion of Paladin just so broken i mean obviously they're going to pick spells they have to pick spells as part of making their class and they're probably going to pick some healing spells just in case they're never going to use them they are never going to use them they're going to burn all their spell slots on divine smite just like they used to and now with paladin smite they're going to use divine smite just one more time it... who are you guys trying to kid this isn't if they so choose perfect now when we get to level three where you pick your subclass you also get channel divinity and here there's a really nice upgrade for paladins in terms of the number of uses of channel divinity they get it used to be that a paladin got exactly one use of channel divinity yeah. and then that was restored upon taking a short or a long rest. Please don't say you're increasing now, that number. you get two uses to start. And every time you take a short rest, you get one use back. And then when you take a long rest, you get all your uses back. But then even better, that two turns into a three when you hit level 11. So you're going to be able to use your channel divinity far more often than you could before. We've also taken the Divine Sense feature that Paladins used to have and turned it into a Channel Divinity option. And in the process, we've also made it last quite a bit longer. So if you do decide to use Divine Sense, rather than it lasting only one round, which was how long it lasted in 2014, it now is going to last 10 minutes. And we Why increased not? its duration, not only because you're now using your channel divinity on it, but also to make it easier to use, particularly in social interaction and exploration scenes. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the classic circumstance of the paladin is at the queen's ball and is trying to figure out which of these party goers is actually a demon or an undead in disguise. Right. Uh, this longer duration will allow the paladin to get a bit more bang for their buck uh, when they decide to use divine sense. We also, at level five, have made it so that all paladins now get the Find Steed spell for free. They always have it prepared, uh, and they can cast it once per day without expending a spell. What? Um, this is a joke, right? They're, they're going to get to the end of this video and go, oh, hey, by the way, just joking, the real leak's coming out in a week or two, right? Um, right? Find Steed. All Paladins get it. One, once per day for free, no spell slot usage. So essentially it's not a spell anymore, it's a, it's a feat. It's a feat. That's, that's what, that's what that is now. Um, that's super. Why do we even have any of the other classes? What, it, Alan's got it all. It's got heavy melee damage, um, three spells once per day, apparently. Um, you have the option to, to get more spells um, that you'll never use. It, it's it's just the end-all, be-all class now. Like, what, what, are we, what are we doing, everybody? What are, what are we doing? Slot. Fine Steed is an iconic Paladin spell, and we decided we did not want a Paladin to have to use up one of their spell preparation slots on that spell. Right. 
And we also wanted you to be able to use it at least once per day without having to use one of your precious few slots, since paladins and rangers do have fewer spell slots than they're not spell casters. Uh, they many of our spell other spellcasters. And then on top of that, the Find Seed Steed spell has been completely redesigned for the paladin so that the steed can now get more powerful depending on the level of the spell slot you use to cast the spell. And the steed is now not reliant on particular animal stat blocks, but instead has a stat block all its own, Perfect. specially designed for the paladin. Perfect. So you really feel like you are summoning this otherworldly creature right. that isn't just a horse or some other creature that you're riding around on, but is this otherworldly being that is there to work with you really as a companion, uh, as this, this faithful companion. Dude, tell me if I'm following along here, uh, and bear with me here. You're summoning a familiar? So our paladins are warlocks now. Um, this just happens to be a familiar that you can also ride. And here we out. Paladins follow a god. Some warlock patrons are gods. Um, some pack goons will let your warlock be a melee fighter. I wouldn't recommend it, but they could be a melee fighter. Paladin's great melee fighter. Warlocks cast spells. You can now build a, a spellcasting devoted paladin. Warlocks summon familiars. Paladin can summon a steed that has its own standalone uh, health block and is meant to be like a companion of sorts, so essentially a familiar. Paladins are warlocks now, everybody. Paladins are the new warlock, just with, you know, health and heavy armor. Cool. And there to assist uh, the paladin and the paladin's friends. That's amazing. I am hoping that with this change, uh, many paladins will feel uh, more empowered to have these really cool companions present on their adventures. And that's again living out that fantasy and, and honing in on that wish fulfillment of wanting to smite more <laughs> and also getting that steed like sooner and, and easier. Absolutely. Uh, we also have in the core class given all paladins a new feature called Abjure Foes. And this gives all paladins a a juicy use for their channel divinity. A number of our paladin subclasses in the past had a channel divinity option that was very similar to Abjure Foes, but it was sort of slightly changed in a number of the subclasses. We decided to take those variants, create a universal version that all paladins are happy to have, and now built it into the base class. Okay. We also did uh, some under the hood work on the Paladin's aura, partly by turning it into a single aura that gains additional abilities. Previously, the Paladin, and particularly based on whatever subclass you ended up picking, would end up having multiple different auras, some of them with different uh, radii, yeah, and it could start getting quite confusing keeping track of like all of your different auras and how big is this one versus that one. Yeah. So we sort of cleaned up the whole aura game for paladins by in the base class and then also in the subclasses that are in this book, all of the auras that used to be different auras before are now all one aura that simply gains new functionality. So it's going to be far easier for the paladin to keep track of what's going on because the paladin now has just one aura that just gains cool new features as the paladin goes up in level. Yeah, because the paladin had so much going on to begin with that they couldn't keep track of their auras. Let's be real. Any paladin player that wasn't keeping track of their auras, they weren't doing it because they didn't, they couldn't, because it was difficult. It's because they didn't care. They didn't need to care. 
most of the time they multi-class into fighter or they multi-class into paladin from fighter so they had action surge so their main focus was how many times can i hit this enemy and divine smite in one turn that's all they cared about that's still all they they're gonna care about there's auras weren't the issue they weren't this is cool this is gimmicky but it's cool one aura one aura cool fine whatever still essentially multiple auras it's just now they're all turned on at the same time it's essentially diablo 2's paladin uh which aura do i want to turn on no 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 just turn them all on at once that fine whatever unnecessary but fine whatever like but saying that it was difficult to keep track of before is <laughs> uh, unreal the aura also makes use of a new type of area of effect that we've introduced in the new player's handbook. And uh, it is an area of effect that has been in the game for the last 10 years, but didn't have a name. And we decided to finally give it a name. And I'm bringing it up now while talking about the Paladin because it's specifically for things like auras and other effects that emanate outward yeah. from a, a particular creature or object. And so this area of effect is called the emanation. We've seen it all over the place in 5th edition over the last 10 years. Basically, any time you read a feature or a monster ability or a spell that talked about creatures within a certain radius being affected by something, that was basically an emanation. It just wasn't called that. Yeah. So we have now given that area of effect a name and given it uh, its own definition, just as the other areas of effect in our system have definitions. And you can now find all of those definitions in the player's handbook's rules glossary. One other thing in the Paladin that I wanted to chat about, because this is the first of the spellcasting classes that we have uh, talked about, is the new approach to spell lists. So each spellcasting class now has its spell list inside the class description. So rather than making a paladin or a ranger yeah. or a warlock or another spell... Go all the spell, way back to the, the end of the book. Instead, it's right there in the class description. But in addition to that, we have work to make the spell list that's in your class more useful for you. And we've done that by not only giving you all the spells by name, but also every spell's school of magic is listed. We also tell you if the spell on your list requires concentration. We also tell you if it's a ritual. And we also tell you if it has a specific component that you must have to cast the spell. That's really cool. I love that because uh, I hated having to, you know, flip to the end of the book. I'm sure everybody hated that. I think it's kind of odd that they're mentioning that with the paladin, you know, reveal um, instead of, I don't know, any legitimate spellcasting class. Calling a paladin a spellcasting class is, I mean, it's technically not wrong. They can cast spells, but I mean. It's like calling a tomato a fruit. Yeah, it's a fruit, but you're never going to see it in a fruit salad. You're going to see it in a regular salad with lettuce, uh, onions, crouton, you know, crap like that. It's a fruit, but it's a fruit that goes with vegetables. Paladin is is a spellcaster, but it's a spellcaster that goes with melee fighters. You're going to see it more likely, more akin to like a barbarian or a fighter because that's what it is. Just because it can cast spells doesn't make it a spellcasting class. You know, a spellcasting class is going to be a class that primarily casts spells. And I know with Divine Smite now being listed as a spell, and that's pretty much all paladins do, that's that's their thing. They are now technically primarily casting spells. Oh, I'm primarily casting spells because my melee attack is now considered a spell. No, you're, they're not They're not spellcasters. It, they can cast spells. That does not make them spellcasters, you know? Um, I can write a short story. It doesn't make me an author. But I do think that it's cool that 
you no longer have to flip to the end of the book to find your, your class spells. That's great. So in those cases, when a component has a specific cost or the spell consumes the component, you must have that component to cast that spell. And so we now tell you in your class spell list if the spell has a, a required component. Uh, so that you now have sort of one-stop shopping for your spells, and you can see at a glance what the spell school of magic is, if it requires concentration, if it's a ritual, and if it has a specific component you must have to cast it. This is all meant for if you're a player and you play paladins or warlocks, you have less pages you need to traverse to understand what you have and what you need. Exactly. Yeah. The paladin subclasses... Uh, have all received some fun updates, uh, starting oh with the Oath of Devotion. Yeah, let's start with the Oath of Devotion. What, 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 what is new here? One of the biggies right away is the Oath of Devotion can now activate their sacred weapon feature uh, as part of the attack action rather than sacking their entire action to do it. Yeah. In the past, it was so punishing to have to use your entire action to activate it that many Paladin players just decided not to use it. Now, as a part of attacking, you can simply decide, I'm going to activate this. We have also replaced in the Oath of Devotion the feature that was previously called Purity of Spirit with a new feature called Smite of Protection. And what this now does is when you use your Divine Smite, because the Oath of Devotion Paladin is the classic knight in shining armor who is there to protect others, it now means that when you use Divine Smite, you and your allies in your aura of protection have half cover for a limited time. So you have this magical protection that gives you the full benefits of half cover, even if you're standing out in the open, as long as uh, your friends are in that aura of protection. And so this gives a nice uh, feeling of being a guardian, even when you're blasting your foes with Divine Smite. So, as you called it, buckets of damage wasn't enough. No, no. You also had to let people use Divine Smite to do buckets of damage. It's again, your words. Um... And give their all their allies in their aura half cover? I'm struggling here to figure out what people were so mad about when this video came out. I'm struggling. I saw so many people um, complaining here on YouTube, on Reddit, um, on Instagram, anywhere that people will listen complaining that they nerfed paladins, made them almost unplayable. I, we're 15 minutes into this 25 minute long video, and I gotta be honest with you, I'm foreseeing a huge, huge influx of paladin players, because this class is broken. They're just making it more and more broken. It's doing more and more damage, doing more and more shenanigans, while doing more and more damage. It's just... I'm disappointed. Okay, everybody, I'm not mad. I'm not mad at Dungeons and Dragons design team. I'm not mad at, at the people that are saying that the Paladin's unplayable now. I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. But let's see, keep going. Uh, we've also made it so that the level 20 ability, Holy Nimbus, is now usable as a bonus action instead of an action because we want you to be able to activate it and then keep going on your turn yeah. uh, rather than essentially spending an entire turn getting ready to do something. And there are a number of places in the player's handbook where abilities that... I'm sorry, I have, I have to say something. That is a ridiculous argument to make it a bonus action. I mean, I'm fine with it being a bonus action. I'm fine with that. It's fine. It's whatever. It, that's just a, a, such a ridiculous reasoning for it. By level 20, you have more than one action. You do. You just do. Um, I don't... It's not taking your entire turn to get ready. 
And if it is, you're probably not using the Nimbus. It's... I... Never mind the fact that most people won't take a single class all the way up to, to level 20 because they're going to multi-class at some point to cover for the weakness. I mean, with the new Paladin class, there are no weaknesses. They won't have to multi-class anymore because the new Paladin does it all. But realistically, they're going to multi-class. They're not going to reach Paladin level 20. It's just not going to happen. Unless you've got a DM like me where, you know, you continue leveling after you, your you know player level is 20. You just can't level past class level 20. Um... But that's only if the campaign goes long enough, obviously. Um, but you're not, you're not, you're not gonna hit Paladin level twenty. It's just not gonna happen. You're gonna multi-class before you get there. Um, but you know, it is, it is what it is. Really, are just turning on a state have often now been changed from being an action to a bonus action, or in some cases, like with Sacred Weapon in Oath of Devotion don't require an action or a bonus action at all, and yeah. instead are absorbed into another action. Uh, because again, in many cases, we want you to get to the fun faster. The Oath of Devotion is joined by the Oath of Glory. This for me is often the paladin who, if they were in a movie, you know, would look at the camera, yeah. <laughs> have, have impossibly white teeth with yeah. a little sparkle on them as they smile. Uh, the Oath of Glory uh, appeared previously in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, as well as in uh, Mythic Odysseys of Theros. Yeah, that's where I first came from. And it has uh, evolved a bit on its way to the Player's Handbook. And uh, one, two of the main evolutions uh, that I think are worth talking about here, uh, one is the Peerless Athlete uh, feature now lasts uh, for an hour rather than 10 minutes. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Uh, this feature is especially useful in exploration contexts. Exactly, yeah. And so we wanted it to uh, be more useful in that pillar of adventure. Uh, the other big change is to Aura of Alacrity. Uh, the new feature here is that it not only benefits your allies who start their turn in your aura of protection, but also if they enter that aura on their turn. Mm. This is re a really major change because before, the aura of alacrity, which speeds you and your allies up, it's all about you know, the paladin allowing you all to charge forward into battle or some other situation more quickly, the way it was designed before, it was actually extremely difficult sometimes for it to even do anything for your friends because they had to time it so that they started their turn yeah. in your aura, yeah. which can actually be more complicated than it sounds <laughs> when everyone is taking turns in a particular order. This change now means that no matter when a person's turn is relative uh, to the paladins, and no matter where they are on the battlefield, as long as they make sure to pass through the aura on their turn, they will suddenly get the speed boost. That's super helpful, otherwise really weird on the battlefield. <laughs> yes, where it's sort of, uh, you can have a whole lot of hurry up and wait. Yeah. One other thing. See, that, that makes sense because an aura is just always there, always active. It's not something that gets activated you know, intermittently. So if you are walking through an aura, you're going to feel it. That just that just makes sense. I'm okay with that. Um, it's actually kind of weird that it wasn't already previously like that. But still more things to make it a little bit more broken. Let's see how much more we can break this class. Uh, I would love to mention about uh, Oath of Glory that relates actually to all of the Paladin subclasses is that we have vetted their oath spell lists in each subclass. And so players are going to see not only in the oath spell list, but also when you get to the cleric, the, do the domain spell list, and in the warlock, the patron spell list, all of these lists have been vetted and in many cases um, updated with different spell options. I'm thinking of this now while we're talking about the Oath of Glory, uh, particularly because the Oath of Glory list in getting updated 
even includes a brand new spell appearing in this player's handbook if it's for the not first a form time. of smite it's not so uh, when you reach level 17 as a paladin and if you have the oath of glory <laughs> subclass you get a brand new spell in the game called yolan's regal presence and this is a spell uh, created by the queen of the elves in the world of greyhawk and it allows the paladin and anyone else who casts the spell uh, to, as it, as it says in the name, have an extraordinarily regal presence uh, that will cause people to like fall down on their knees and also potentially take psychic damage uh, from just how glorious uh, you are. That might get used <laughs> in the role playing. I wanted purposes, to bring that up because combat, it's uh, not going to get used. Uh, uh, every, I hope everyone will take time. You know, when they when they come to their favorite subclass, if it's a subclass that had a little spell list. Take a look at that list because you're going to find often uh, that not only have some of the spells been swapped, you know, one spell for another, but sometimes the new spell that's on the list is a brand new spell for the game. Perfect. So we have the Oath of the Ancients Paladin. This is one of my favorites. It feels like the Green Knight. It's a very unique feel from any other class or subclass. And when we created the Oath of the Ancients, Originally, for the 2014 Player's Handbook, it really was in answer to the question, what would a paladin look like who had been a part of elven culture yeah. or you know, another culture that maybe is less sort of knight in shining armor, but, but still you know, would have these noble oaths and have a lot of the, the dedication that we associate with paladins, but again, more of a nature or, you know, or druidic or elven aesthetic. And so the answer to that was the Oath of the Ancients. The art for it is wonderful, as is the art for uh, all of the subclasses in the book. And we have uh, made some enhancements to the Oath uh, as it has migrated into uh, the new player's handbook. One of those is that the subclass's aura of warding at level seven now just straight up gives people in your aura resistance to necrotic, psychic, and radiant damage. Because this paladin is all about protecting people from, in some cases, foes from beyond, yeah. you know, uh, and so that's why their aura now will protect you from the magic of, you know, necro necrosis, which we associate it with the negative energy plane, radiant damage, which is from the positive energy plane, and then psychic damage, which we often associate with the far realm. And radiant damage can feel also very creepy. It doesn't have to feel like celestial and happy and good this can right. also be something this can be feel like radioactive exactly so it's not always a benevolent or natural source exactly just as necrotic damage is not always malevolent right uh, because death can be a i mean it is a natural part of the yeah. world also in the subclass we have increased the range of the subclass's Nature's Wrath ability, uh, which is their Entanglement ability. Yeah. So if you love playing an Oath of the Ancients Paladin and tangling people up in roots, well, now you can do that even easier because the range of that ability has been extended. Uh, we have also, uh, in the subclass's Undying Sentinel ability, made it so that if you pop back from zero, you don't pop back with just one hit point. Yeah. And just as we did in the Barbarian, you now pop back with a bunch of hit points so that you don't get knocked down <laughs> immediately after you popped back up. Perfect. Those are the main changes here. And really just uh, our effort to make this great subclass just even better at the fun stuff it was already doing. I love that even the subclasses that are very tried and true are still getting you know a facelift, a facelift, an upgrade, yes. and getting a, something extra to do. And that is true of every subclass in the book, uh, that no matter how solid it was, it's getting some new upgrade. Yeah. And so that leaves us then with the Oath of Vengeance. This was another subclass that was super solid, but still has uh, some fun new toys within it. Uh, 
one of the biggies because it affects the the subclass's most iconic ability, its vow of enmity, is you no longer have to use your bonus action to activate your vow of enmity. This you can now use simply as a part of the attack action. Wow. And we've also made it so that if the target of your vow of enmity perishes, you now have a, a window of time where you can transfer it to somebody else. Like Hex. It used to be that you would place it on somebody, and if they got felled quickly enough, right. it's like, well... Well, I guess that's done. Or yeah. someone else kills them, yeah, yeah. And so now, similar to how Hunter's Mark functions, where you can move that spell around, uh, you can now also move around your Vow of Enmity. At level 20, with their Avenging Angel ability, yeah. uh, we've made two major enhancements. One of them is you can now activate it as a bonus action instead of an action. Thank you. The new player's handbook is available for pre-order right now on D&D Beyond. All right, I don't, I don't know why they chose to cut themselves off there. Um, <laughs> I guess they didn't want to tell us everything. Which is weird because they didn't really tell us much of anything other than, hey, um, Divine Smite on a Stick is still Divine Smite on a Stick, but now better. Um, <laughs> yeah, this this is a whole lot of, hey, let's um, let's let this Paladin do more melee damage. I think I think some of the changes they've done are cool. Um, they've increased on the spell list. They've given them access to or a way to access the cleric cantrip spell list uh and that's cool i don't think in the grand scheme of things it will matter i don't think anyone will use it um especially since it means getting rid of or forgoing uh fighting style um i guess only time will tell really but i'm disappointed they the only thing they really seem to change in the paladin is making it do more damage making it be able to divine smite more and make it so it's Divine Smite does other things in certain cases. And it didn't really need that. It needed a balancing. In my opinion, it was one of the more overpowered classes, uh, especially uh, melee classes, because it can take a hit. Uh, it's, it, they usually have high AC and a shield for that extra 2 to AC. And they dealt heavy damage. They had the ability to heal, but they didn't have to heal. Um, with Lay on Hands, they could heal without using spell slots, which means they could save all their spell slots for Divine Smite. It was just an all-arounder, um, and they just decided to continue that. And now it's got, it's essentially got a familiar with its Fine Steed spell that they, or it's, <laughs> I can't even call it a spell. It's Fine Steed or Summon Steed feature, because it doesn't use a spell slot. And you can, yeah, you can only use it once a day. Um, because it doesn't use a spell slot, but that, that makes it more like a feature than a spell as well. So, but the, the steed is essentially a companion. It's essentially a familiar, you know, keep warlocks as warlocks, keep paladins as paladins, you know. Uh, and I know I'm nitpicking on that because it's so easy to nitpick, but yeah, I'm just kind of disappointed in how they decided to go about this. Um, just like everybody else, just in a different way. But it is what it is. So, yeah, if you disagree with anything I said, obviously, let's have a conversation in the comments below. If you learned anything or you think you can learn anything from me in the future, be sure to hit that subscribe button so that, you know, you can see the rest of my videos. Uh, and we can continue having conversations in the comments. If there's a certain class you want me to go over, there's a certain video that you want me to, to break down, be sure to let me know which one in the comments and I'll get to it as quickly as possible. Thanks for watching.